through the hall, rising to the landing, tearing pictures from the walls. Currents pull us underneath that bright tide, ripped us out into a tangled coral reef where we could never drown. Now that we're at the end. So I'll give you a little tour of this. This is um, the grist mill I made from quartz rock, a big quartz rock I found on the field next door, and wood that I had that I milled on a table saw from uh, a Bradford pear tree uh, branch that came down and some trimmings from uh, some ornamental cherry trees that we have. So. I tried to make it as much as possible from locally, like within 100 feet of my house, available materials. I even did the hinges um, in wood. Everything is pegged, um, the exception of the bolts that hold the uh, flywheel here and um, the bearings in place. Um, and the screws that hold the bedstone uh, in place. Everything is, um, is pegged. Um, here's uh, the inside. Um, there is a hub that is attached with screws to the back of the um, stone that turns. And then I made this, which is to adjust the grind. Um, it's uh, riding on a bronze bearing and then there's a second um, bearing there so that everything stays steady. This is uh, back here, uh, a wedge that keeps the, um, uh, keeps the bedstone steady. This is uh, a 90 degree um, copper pipe fitting uh, to a copper pipe that goes uh, that feeds uh, the, the wheat into the grindstone. I originally was going to put it in through the side of the housing, um, but that didn't work. It wouldn't feed in, so I um, plugged that up and cut a hole in the top. And so that's basically it for that. And then here's the wheat that I use. Um, this is actually grown about uh, six miles from here in Lovettsville, Virginia. So it is very local wheat, very nice. And it makes lovely, delicious bread. So what I do here is I, this is the uh, sifted flour. Um, I use just a strainer. As you can see, that's the bran um, come off the, the hulls. Um, I will run that back through the, uh, the grist mill and turn that also into um, bran flour to mix in and make a really nice whole wheat. But this is the way it looks when it comes out the first first time. And, uh, and this is the second grinding. Actually, you get a picture of what that looks like. Most of the flour does wind up in the drawer, which is great. So I'll sift this and uh, have a little bit of bran left over from that, but that's taking the bran from the first run and running it through a second time.
So this is um, <clears throat> an experiment on cutting a large quartz rock. Um, I looked online and about how to cut quartz and you get quartz countertop or you get people taking quartz crystals and cutting them, but nobody cutting a quartz rock, at least that I found. So what I'm going to try to do is cut a bit of the end off of this over there. And um, uh, the blade's not going to go all the way through. Part of what I want to try to see is will quartz break um, evenly along a cut line. So we'll see what happens. As you can see, I've got our circular saw. It's got a, a stone cutting blade, diamond blade on it. All right. So here I've cut it from both sides. Um, very loud, very dusty. Tried putting some water on it, but not sure it actually helped. So you're right, not quite perfect, but let me get a hammer. We'll give it a blow and see what happens. Okay, here comes the big test. Well, that didn't work. All right, let's see if the force of gravity works. And work it does. And as you can see, it did split pretty much along the same line. So here's the deal. You can split quartz. Good to know. So this is what the quartz splitting was about. I am trying to make a pair of grinding wheels for grinding wheat into flour. Traditionally, um, a special kind of quartz from France was used, and so I'm not sure whether good old Virginia quartz will do the trick, but this is my attempt. Uh, it started looking kind of like that. Um, what I'm going to be doing here is seeing if I can get this one side as flat as possible and then square up the sides and then measure a thickness and cut it to thickness and then I'll have to figure out how to make it round. So hopefully even the weighted round and then to make its mate out of this using a diamond wet saw on my <sighs> handy dandy um, table saw and this contraption made out of bent up copper pipe is to hold um, a plastic tube, fill that with water, put it on a ladder, start a siphon so that I can have water for cutting the stone. Okay, so I have gotten most, uh, I've gotten it Mostly flat, not completely even, of course. But I've got this bit in the middle. And so I've made this jig that this will sit on. And then I will flip it over and see if I can't set... I'm not sure if this is going to work. Because the size of the blade. Hmm. Coño, no había pensado en esto. Okay. So I have cut the full height of the saw blade into this. Um, raising it just a little bit of the time, keeping water on it, and cutting and cutting until I get to the right point. Now I'm gonna show you, see how. So. So here you can see with the jig, you can see where I've cut into the jig, but you can see how I've cut it, sort of this crisscross pattern and the pieces come out. Um, there's my hammer and obviously really important to have your breathing protection, your eye protection and your hearing protection because man, this thing is loud and kicks up a ton of dust. Okay, so there it is. Uh, to get it roughly 
cleaned up, I dragged the um, saw blade across the surface. I'm absolutely certain that's not recommended by anybody, but hey, seems to work. And so far my luck has held up. So now my next task is to square up the sides. Now that I've got a flat surface, which is now turned over on the saw and use the wet saw or the wetted saw to square up the shoulders so that um, hopefully that will assist in get it, choosing a thickness and getting a parallel cut on the other um, large flat surface. After a ton of grinding and cutting and um, back and forth and up and down, I finally have my two blanks cut out of a large piece of Virginia quartz that will hopefully, when I get them fully squared and cut into rounds, will become my um, grindstones. One will be an anvil, which will be stationary, and the other will spin. Um, at least that's the way I've seen it on the ones that were commercially available some time ago. Uh, all right. Sun's starting to go down, so, well, not really, but it's getting to be early evening here in Virginia in mid-March. Well, now the uh, task is to see if I can make these blanks into round millstones. So I have marked an 8-inch circle on each one in a position where I will hopefully get a good solid um, wheel out of it. Um, I used a Le Creuset uh, um, lid for a saucepan, which was just about 8 inches to mark my circle. I don't think they ever imagined that would be a use of that particular lid, but there you have it. Okay, so after, again, a ton of cutting and shaping, I have my rough round eight inch millstone. I think it's gonna take quite a bit of work to get it to be completely even and so it doesn't spin lopsided, but it's a start, right? Well, I got both um, stones cut and round. This is going to be the stationary bedstone, I now know it's called. Uh, as I was cutting it, a piece flaked off, and you can see there's iron in there. So I'm going to take this and run it across, run it against the, uh, the fence like that, and see if I can slice off down to there. The stone is, doesn't need to be this thick, I don't think. Here's giving it a go. Okay, so I have cut the width of the blade all the way around. It's still attached because it doesn't go quite through. Um, I have cut, all, cut beyond the piece that was broken. So I'm going to start tapping this with a hammer and hopefully it will do what it's supposed to do. Um, truing the grinding stones, I built this uh, kind of Rube Goldberg um, thing. And it does seem to be working. It does seem to be getting it uh, pretty even and round. That's the um, uh, shaft that will hold the wheel when it's in the the, um, the mill. Going slowly, but you can hold. I found that moving the um, mandrel up and down with a hammering motion works best for cutting through the cords. Okay, well, laying out the, um, the cutting edges on this uh, um, stone, I am 
it's 24 inches circumference, so I figured I could divide that evenly by eight into three and a quarter. And so that's the pattern that Meadows Mill seems to use on their eight inch mill. So they use it, hey, should work. And here's the bedstone, which I have enclosed in this wooden frame. It's uh, glued to, being glued together now with dowels. Um, I've got it under tension because of that fault line on the top of the bedstone. Um, I just want to make sure that if it's squeezed together, hopefully that will prevent it from failing. All right, upward and onward. I have cut the stones. That was a little nerve wracking cutting into those stones. I spent so much time shaping and building, but I have to have these grinding grooves. And this is more or less the pattern that's on the, um, the Meadows Mill eight inch wheel. So let's see how it hopefully works. Okay, so figuring out the structure for the, um, the housing for the, the mill. Um, so I've got a, uh, I've, I've been milling wood from various things that fell off of trees here or were trimmed off. And so I've got some um, locust right there. That's pretty hard and sturdy, so I'm making the frame from that. I've milled some boards from pear wood, um, and I also have some cherry. And as you can see from my pile of sawdust, it's been a lot of sawing. Well, working on the housing here. This is um, on the sides, it's uh, pear wood. And there's the ledge on the back, which I'll build off for the um, to house the motor if I choose to go that direction. This is a drawer that will be the catchment for the, um, the flower as the mill, Chris Mill grinds. Again, same thing on this side. So it's starting to come together. This is all the, not at all actually, part of the offcuts from milling the, um, the logs into lumber to make the housing. I guess I'll have a lot of kindling. Well, I've been working on it for a while and I've got the armature, the cabinet, I think pretty much complete other than put the electric motor on, getting the, um, building up that back tray to hold that. And then I've got a bearing there. And you'll see as I open this, that here we go. So we have the grinding wheels in there and this is the adjustment mechanism i'm gonna have to replace that because it's gonna interfere with the flywheel but getting closer well it is all together not clear if it's actually going to work as intended but here's the Singer sewing machine wheel, which is quite lovely, right? Um, I had to drill and tap a hole by freehand. That was exciting. And here's this, uh, that is actually a Singer sewing machine leather um, belt, which I think is fantastic. Um, and this is this, this uh, I got this from eBay, of course, but it's a, uh, it's an old fashioned, um, electric motor. And I put in this old fashioned toggle switch. And 
dulu ya This is uh, running The big wheel of course reduces the 1750 RPM to I don't know how many RPM And here baby for the ride show wheels turning There's my adjuster That's where the tube for feeding the grain comes in uh, It's not completely flat, but it's pretty good. I've got it um, That is about a thick piece of papers with gap so I'm hoping that'll be sufficient if not I'm gonna have to remove and adjust the stones but pretty cool and there's my drawer as it turned out everything is urethane um, and with the exception of the bolts that are holding the bedstone in and the flywheel here um, and the bearing everything on this is put together with um, pegs there isn't a nail or a screw in this thing it's all completely pegged together I was hoping to sort of go for a, uh, a 19th century look on it so hopefully I achieve that and the back here this is the platform which I extended and uh, the top is lovely cherry. All right, next step is seeing whether this thing will actually grind gray. So this is um, a an auger to pull the wheat into the hole that feeds between the grinding stones, and it is um, from a meat grinder. It's aluminum, and I had to grind it down to make the specifications uh, or make it fit uh, in the, the hole um, and it's got a, a threaded end which then screws into the uh, the other end of the shaft that I developed so I did actually had to drill and tap a hole in the shaft so and I did that by hand so that's a lot of fun but there it is okay that's how we pull the wheat into between the grinding wheels